I'm Terry McDonald, Executive Director of Robertson Museum and Science Center. And I'm Jason Fumi, the Marketing and Public Relations Director for Robertson Museum and Science Center. We want to welcome you to the historic Robertson Mansion. Robertson is a gift to the community in everything we do with our exhibitions, our programs, the collections that we have on display, especially that in the Treasures of the Vault. But it all began here with this beautiful, beautiful mansion. The Robertson Mansion opened to the public in 1954. The Robertsons had willed it to be a place for community engagement and learning with a focus on arts history and science education. And that carries over into our mission today where we offer programs and events and oftentimes use the mansion for these programs that maintain engagement of people of all ages and backgrounds for art history and science education programs. This location really highlights the work of Mr. Robertson. He was a lumber baron, and we often say that the designs within various rooms here were his marketing tool. He was able to bring people in here to show them the work that they could have in their own home done by his company. As you go room to room, you'll see all kinds of different detail, all kinds of different woodwork, and even the type of wood that's used. The Robertson Mansion has many features. Uh, first floor, second floor, third floor, big ballroom, uh, a library space, a study, a fabulous dining room, the staircase. One of the features that you'll notice a lot of as you walk through are fireplaces. The mansion is full of 11 fireplaces all throughout. Uh, pretty impressive of considering only two people lived here, just Mr. and Mrs. Robertson. They didn't have any kids. In their servants' quarter, they averaged about five to seven servants at a time. But again, all of this beautiful wonder enjoyed by just Alonzo and Margaret Robertson. We try to utilize this uh, space year round. It, it really was meant to be for community enjoyment. So whether it's for our New Year's Eve masquerade party or when we're decking it out for home for the holidays, this mansion absolutely transforms. And it's as much for the community to enjoy as it is for us to enjoy. This beautiful gallery is exhibiting a program that we're calling Treasures of the Vault. And this was really intended to celebrate all the gifts that have been given to Robertson over time. Unlike many museums, when Robertson was open to the public, it was not founded originally as a museum, but as a community center. And so the collections that Robertson owns primarily have come as gifts from the community. Robertson contains some collections that could be anywhere in any museum in the world. Some of them, including those that came from the Victoria Levine collection, include objects from ancient Greece and Rome. They're beautiful works, very, very valuable, and we're very pleased to have them. Some of the other objects that we have are smaller works by very well-known artists. We have works by Matisse, by Dali, and Picasso here as well. Robertson is the only museum in this region that is American Alliance of Museums accredited. It's very important to us that we maintain our collections in ways that are proper in the museum business. We underwent, just a couple of years ago, a complete inventory of all of our collections. We've digitized the collections that we own here. We wanted to be able to showcase the work that we've done, bring some of these great treasures up for the world to see. We're very proud of the works that we have here on display. Robertson's collection is really encyclopedic. We have a touch screen as part of the exhibit that really features the floor plan of the exhibit itself and offers you an opportunity to really delve in a little bit deeper to the collections that we have. For example, if you wanted to look at some of the works that we have from ancient Greece and identify it on the map here, you could click on this to look at this Greek amphora and how it is figured in the Metropolitan Museum of Arts collections. We can do this with a number of the pieces that are here and it features works that are available in the MoMA and the British Museum. It's really incredible in a museum our size to have such a fantastic collection and to be able to allow our visitors to see them firsthand. We are in the expanded model train layout here at Robertson. We're proud to say that we have the largest publicly accessible model train layout in the region. It took about a year and a half of thousands of hours of volunteer work to put this together, and it really highlights details of Binghamton, Endicott, Johnson City, Susquehanna, PA, 
And it's a labor of love, and it's done by community members who really take interest in Robertson, interest in the hobby of train building. We feature an awesome model train show, which gets thousands of people each year. And to be able to highlight the past and present of our community in such a layout that's on permanent display is a really big deal for us. I think one of the things you'll find most interesting about this layout is the attention to detail by our volunteers. You'll see things that are very familiar, especially if you're from or familiar with the area. You'll see IBM, but you also see Elk's Bake Shop, and oftentimes we hear from people who say that they used to get their birthday cakes from Elks when they were a kid. You see an old Olam store that's got a flickering TV inside. We've got all kinds of things representing Pennsylvania. As you look at the Strucca Viaduct, neatly composed, it's got every arc in there that is actually represented in the official structure. So you come in here, you could spend a lot of time looking at all the details that we have.